Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumps to Lightning episode. This is an episode that I'm excited about. We're going to talk about Acri and what Acri is all about. I have Eugene here with me. Play the music. Hi everyone, Leo is here with another Jumps to Lightning episode. And today we're going to talk about the topic that I'm excited about because I've been playing around with this. I don't know a lot about it, but I did start doing some stuff with that. And I have Eugene with me. Eugene, how are you doing? Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Uh, you know, you and I have been, been talking about this, and this is part of the extended uh, series that we're doing around AKS as Essentials, and Acre has been part of that. But Eugene, before we dive into all the cool stuff that you have to show me today, who you are, what is it that you do? Yeah, so hi, my name is Eugen. Um, I'm a product manager under Azure Engine Platform, and I'm working on a bunch of open source initiatives for Acre. Eugene, you know, uh, recently I moved into the same organization as you are uh, under the Agile yeah. platform. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's been yeah, I know it's been it's been exciting. It's been exciting. I've been uh, seeing a lot of things happening, and one of those things is Acre. And let me tell you a story here for a second. Um, when Acre came out, I remember that uh, that email that came out with some you know like an internal announcements around Acre. That was, you know, I don't even remember if it was in the alpha version or uh, zero point one. But I remember looking at this and I was like, hmm, that's interesting that now I can look at cameras the same way as I can look at Kubernetes resources. Um, and that was back then, it was when we were starting to think about some of the VNEX stuff that we are working on in the Jumpstart. And I was like, hmm, that's going to be interesting down the line in the future. And here we are. Yeah, it's crazy because, you know, we've talked about Kubernetes at the heavy edge, you know, with servers and HCI. Yeah. And we also talked about the light edge with Windows IoT um, PCs. And now we're kind of trying to address the tiny edge space. Yeah. And this tiny edge notion is really, it's an interesting term. Uh, I remember talking about this with, uh, you know, with Francisco, one of your colleagues, when we did uh, the previous episodes of AKS and, and Edge Essentials. And I remember this term tiny edge. So educate me, what does tiny edge really mean? So tiny edge is really think of like IoT leaf devices. So you can think of sensors, actuators, cameras, things like that, where they're too small and too locked down to actually run Kubernetes mm. on them today. Okay, so today we're here to talk about Acre, right? So educate me what Acre is all about because this is this is super interesting stuff. Yeah, totally. So Acre, which it actually means edge in Greek, um, but it can also be read as an acronym for a Kubernetes resource interface. And what Acre does is it provides an abstraction layer that removes the work of finding and monitoring the availability of these tiny edge devices for you. Mm -hmm. So it's currently a CNCF sandbox project, meaning it's all open source. Yeah, it's a uh, you know, it's kind of nice coincidence. The, the acronym fits into you know what it is that never yeah. happened so that's kind of cool <laughs> um, so this is all about taking those devices right that you never thought that you will have some sort of a digital representation of those devices inside a larger platform i want to say or an orchestrator like kubernetes and bring those into that right exactly so okay. yeah Opry will just run as like you know simple little pods on your cluster and it uses these protocols that the iot leaf devices speak so for example like we have opc ua omnip and udev and these protocols will allow you to bridge these devices to your cluster as resources and what is it that i can do with those devices like why why would i want to bring those cameras and those sensors as uh, a, a representation objects inside um, or a representative objects inside Kubernetes. Yeah, so I feel like a lot of people are moving towards Kubernetes as like the workload orchestrator these days. And because we didn't have a way to address, you know, these tiny edge devices, it was really difficult to deploy workloads on them using Kubernetes. Um, but if you use Augury, um, you'll have these as resources and our brokers will actually allow you to connect to those devices so you can use whatever information, video stream, whatever it is on your applications. Mm -hmm. And I have another question for you, Eugene. I know that you're going to show me some, you know, I always love to see some architecture, architecture diagrams, and I know that you have those for me and also a cool demo. I wanted to ask you, you know, when we're talking about Kubernetes, a lot of the time it's coming with the, um, just kind of with the notion or with the relations to the developer community. 
Um, how, like, what is it that we're seeing with Acre and the developer community, the potential there? Can you maybe share this a bit with me? I'm, I'm curious about that one specifically. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously there's a lot of different protocols out there for these IoT Leaf devices, right? Mm -hmm. And the exciting thing about open source community is that, you know, anyone out there can contribute to this project. And so it's really designed with the extensibility in mind. So anyone can use our custom templates for creating new discovery handlers for your own protocols and brokers as well. All right. Got it. Okay. Show me, show me some good stuff with, uh, you know, with some architecture, and 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 I know that you have a demo for me as well. Yes. So this is like an overview of the Agri architecture, and there are kind of five main components that you should know about. So on the right here, um, you see the configuration, and the configuration is our first custom resource definition, and mm -hmm. this is where you kind of tell Agri what kind of devices you want to look for. Um, you might do some filtering, or you might specify like which workloads you want to deploy to those devices. Okay. And what are I, I have a question here. What is the expansion potential to this? Like what, you know, today what you're showing here is literally, you know, just a Kubernetes YAML, right? You mentioned this is a CRD, right? But what are the things that we're thinking about in terms of describing these resources in a, you know, what, what type of things that we're seeing in the wild? I'm curious. Um, what do you mean? I mean, like if you look at the if you look at the way that we're describing those devices, right? I see the discovery handler. I see the the, the broker spec. How do we think these are, are these all devices described in the same way? Do we see any difference between a camera, for example, with a thermostat, or like how does that look like? Educate me here. Yeah, actually, so the configuration actually makes it really easy for you, for you to generically find devices. And in the future, we're looking at extending this so that you can specify devices to parameters and types of devices. So it makes it easy for you to just go and find those devices without having to specify each and every one in your facility or whatever. Got it. Okay. What are the rest of the components that I need to know about? And so from there, you know, you'll have the discovery handler, which is deployed to your node. And this actually goes and looks for those devices that you specified by protocol. And then once it finds the devices, it will go tell the agent, the Aukri agent, and this handles the resource availability changes and it'll enable resource sharing. And th this will create the instance CRDs. So this is our second custom resource definition. Um, and this helps track the availability and usage of your device. Okay. And from there, um, you have the Aukri controller, which will see each Aukri instance and whatever broker um, workload that you specified in your configuration will be deployed for each of those devices. So basically just standard MQTT brokers that can just observe those messaging and pass them along, right? Sure, yeah, it could be MQTT broker, OPC UA broker, a video yeah. streaming broker. And yeah, you can notice that the agent and discovery handlers are deployed as daemon sets, um, but the controller will run just on the control plane. So Eugene, before we're switching into the demo, there is one, you know, there is one observation here that I that you know that I'm making. And obviously we talked about this in the past, but just to our viewers, you know, the observation that I have here is that, you know, if you look looking at Kubernetes as a runtime, right, um, until today, or, you know, I want to say in the past few years, Kubernetes runtime was always about, you know, just kind of the applications that are running on top of that. But when it comes to, you know, CRDs, that was always the big thing, right? Or one of the biggest thing with Kubernetes that, that you can take resources that were that you never thought that can be described as Kubernetes resources and make those Kubernetes resources, but it was always in the context of an application, an infrastructure, uh, you know, stuff like that. This is a bit different. These are devices that physically lives outside of that paradigm that we are talking about usually when we're talking about Kubernetes. Exactly. So I think that's like the exciting part of all this. It actually extends what is the Kubernetes device plugin framework that exists, and it will create these yeah devices that actually you yeah. can look at from your cluster. All right. Show me the magic. Um, so, you know, before we hop into the actual demo, I'll just go over how the architecture looks like with AKS yeah. Essentials. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, so we're, you know, running this demo on this. I have a small Lenovo Think Center with Windows 10 IoT Enterprise as the host operating system. Mm -hmm. And so for simplicity, I've just created a single machine cluster with an external switch and it's running K3s. Mm -hmm. And we have an OnVIF camera that's connected to the same network. And when I deploy Aukri, it will create those pods that I talked about previously. And the Aukri instance, you know, will be created for our discovered device and the broker will be um, deployed as well automatically. Very cool. All right. And then we deploy the Edge AI inferencing workload, which is just basically an HTTP server and it receives a frame, base64 encoded, and it'll run a tiny YOLO v3 model and return the results with um, the accuracy, the labels, and bounding box coordinates. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's see the rest of it. Yeah, and then finally, you know, we'll have a Linux container that's just running a simple Flask app um, with OpenCV, and it'll connect to the camera, which is discovered um, using RTSP. And for each frame, it'll send the frame to the model, which will receive the inference results and show it in the web page. And you can see that this web page, you know, can be access directly from the Windows host OS using our browser. Very cool. Tons of potential with these type of use cases. And obviously you uh, you mentioned few acronyms here. So we're gonna link few uh, you know few links in the description below so people can educate themselves like what these protocols and what is on the you know really means. But I'm I'm excited about this. Awesome. So now I'll just get into the actual demo. Um, so first, let me just show you, um, I have this OnVIF device manager, which is just running on my host OS, and this is able to discover any OnVIF cameras that's on your network. Mm -hmm. and so here, you can check that it's working, and I'm waiting <laughs> to it right here. <laughs> and so now um, I have a you know, K3's cluster running already. And what I've done here is I've opened up the port for web service dynamic discovery, which is mm -hmm. 372 um, for our OnVIF camera. Yep. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a Helm chart to install Aukri. So here I'm just passing in the parameters. So I'm enabling OnVIF discovery. And mm -hmm. I'm saying I'm just gonna discover one camera for today. And this broker on the video broker is what I wanna deploy for each of those instances. So All we're right. gonna deploy this. Just a simple Helm deployment. Mm -hmm. And you will see that our agent controller and discovery handlers are running. And right. now you can also see our configuration resource right here. You can see the capacity is one. And now let's see if our camera has been discovered. So this is the instance which describes and the availability and like which node it's on currently. So let's pause for a moment here and, and make sure that our viewers understand what, you know, what we're looking at. The last line that you put, like the cube color get accurate, that's is that is something that is available because of the CRD, right? That's the resource. And you are literally now describing a camera that you just kind of, you know, wave at. And that's what we're seeing here. That's a resource. Yeah, it's just like as easy as like cube control get pod, you can do cube yeah. control get agri and see your cool. lenses. All right. And so now we're going to just apply the Edge AI model that I talked about as a normal, you know, Kubernetes deployment. So this has been deployed. Let's just check that it's running. So it's running. And now I'm going to get the service. So we have our external IPM port of the service that we've created. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go into the video app and I'm going to copy and paste the IP into our source service of the app. All right, so now I'm going to save that and just apply this as a normal deployment again. Mm -hmm. And let's just make sure that it's running. So it's running already. Mm -hmm. We can get the service and let's get the node address of our cluster. Mm -hmm. And then from there, let's copy paste these in here into our browser. And the port. And 
and voila, you can see the bottle and vase are being inferenced and it's a bit laggy, but let's see if I put a cup here, it might pick up that it's a cup. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. I really like that. I also like the shameless plug of Arc Jumpstart. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> yes, but uh, this is like this is super impressive. You know, it's uh, it was something very kind of easy to show, but there is a lot of logic and a lot of brain that goes around this stuff. And I think that the ML piece, right, that model that you're showing right now, and thank you for the thank you for that uh, demo, Eugene. The, the, this ML piece that you just showed, I think that this is where you know, the potential starting to unveil, um, you know, the fact that we were able to discover that resource, right, that camera, that's just a vessel, that's just means to an end, right? Because just having a resource that is a camera, that's just one, the first step, it's what you do with that. And that's what you just showed me. That's really impressive. Yeah, and I think, you know, this extends to other scenarios as well. Um, you know, in a factory setting, you might have OPC UA servers and you yeah. might be able to do, you know, anomaly detection and other fun scenarios like that at the edge. Yeah, I also thinking about, for example, you know, like a retail store or a restaurant or something like that, that you have camera and then you have like facial recognition or emotion recognitions, you know, stuff like that. Um, um, definitely, it's definitely something that i see a lot of potential in eugene thank you so much for uh for joining me for this episode this was uh this was a super fun episode and for the jumpstart viewers thank you so much for watching as you can see a lot of cool stuff are coming and this is part of the aks edge essentials um, um extended series so again uh make sure to like and subscribe because why not and eugene thank you so much for uh, for joining me again thank you for having me and we're gonna see you next time